Well, thank you for having uh, me here. I'm uh, going to tell you about a project that uh, we conducted while I was uh, director of the Museum of National History in the Netherlands, and it is a national vending machine. Uh, normally, uh, people tend to think of history as something that's really abstract and really far away and has nothing to do with their own lives. And yet, uh, we all have personal stories where there's a lot of history in it and we have family histories and we are writing our own books and having our family albums. And if all these albums and all these stories, the larger story of history is as well. And we thought, uh, while building a national history museum, it is really important for people to see that there is a connection between their own lives and the larger history that they're getting told about on, at school and at home. To get that message across, we thought, how, how, what is something that's really close to people and that we can really uh, put a pro project around? And we decided we'd do something with objects. We were a museum after all, and museums think in terms of objects. Now, if you ask people what are historical objects, they come mostly with objects that are very famous because very famous people use them. And when I was a fellow at the Smithsonian in Washington, down the escalators on the way to the canteen, there were George Washington's teeth, and they are late 18th century dentures. And it was quite disgusting to look at, actually, but there's large groups of people came every day to, to see those. Then there's, of course, the guilty objects. This is in Berlin. That's uh, part of the writing desk of, uh, of Adolf Hitler. And there's, of course, the reliquaries. This is uh, some handwriting by Lenin uh, about dialectics. Now, we tend to think of these when we see those, that they're really historical objects. And we know why they're popular. Uh, a famous Dutch historian has once uh, coined the term historical sensation. If you get really close to these objects and you see them, you really think, wow, this is really Lenin's hand writing this, and wow, this is really the desk at which Hitler wrote, and these are the teeth that George Washington himself wore. Um, and that's all very good and very interesting, but that's history far away. And we also have lives full of very common objects. This is a somewhat old-fashioned table in a Dutch household, I think set for breakfast, but it could be lunch. And look at all the objects at this table. There's porcelain, there's bread baskets, there's little candles in glass, and there's egg holders, and there's tulips. How did, it, how did all these things come into our homes and our, on, our, on our tables and in our households? So we decided, wouldn't it be lovely to have people introduce the history of all the objects that they were surrounded with every day? and make that part of the larger history story they were um, learning at other places. So we drew up a large list of all kinds of objects, household objects, political objects, archaeological objects, all kinds of things that people could be interested, wouldn't really know immediately about that they had a history, but we could show about that they all did. So for instance, I'll show you a few examples. Uh, how did the Dutch become so fond of porcelain. They have, not only their kitchens are full of porcelain, but every living room in the Netherlands has ceremonial porcelain that you show to other people. And that has to do with the tradition of the Dutch in the 17th century, in which they conspicuously consumed with porcelain. Show what great porcelain you had in your household. Why do, the pe why do Dutch people use nutmeg in their, in, their, um, in their recipes? because they once used to have a monopoly on the most expensive spice to be got in the, in the world, and they colonized the Banda Islands of Indonesia for it, and they, you know, it's a re really black, black page in Dutch history, but it's why we still use nutmeg. Uh, why do people need f bicycle wells? When did it start? When was bicycling in the Netherlands become so dangerous and the traffic so congested that you need those bells? And did the Dutch really invent the light bulb, is what the Dutch think, but I don't think it's entirely true. And how did the Dutch in the 80s suddenly turn against nuclear energy massively? So there's lots of objects and there's, there's so much things we could do. Now we could of course put them in a presentation, like a museum presentation or a design presentation or in vitrines. But these are all small objects, they're not scars. You can, what, what fun would it be to bring them home and to bring the history with it home as well? So we decided, what could be another form in which you can put the small objects in and then have tourists or people or visitors take them out again? This is a Dutch snack tradition. I don't know if you know this in Moscow, but there's long walls with all these little window boxes. You put a coin in, you open the box, and you take a snack out. 
and we decided, wouldn't it be fun to put all kinds of these historical objects in these window boxes? And, uh, you know, there was a second good thing about it, is that if you use this window box sort of method, then you need to have objects, you know, you have two conditions for your objects. They need to be small and they need to be reproducible because behind the windows there are people refilling if you take something out and somebody from the back puts a new one in. So we decided we're going to make um, this national vending machine for historical objects. We gave every object, we gave a label which would say, you know, this is a cheese grater. I don't know if you have cheese graters in Moscow but, uh, or in, in Russia, but the Dutch all, they don't cut cheese with knives, they have this grater. And there's all kinds of theories, but I'll get back to that in a moment. And we made, for every object, we made a film. And here you can see what the machine looked like. We asked an artist to make a, a, a thing that looked like a vending machine, like a snack machine, but was a little bit different and it need to be, needed to be portable because we needed to bring it to all kinds of venues and have people decide what kind of objects to put in. Um, so to the right side you see you needed to get a swipe card to open the window boxes and you made a website profile at the same time. In the middle you got your object and entirely to the left you had the video played and you couldn't only see oh, here's some happy people using it uh, you couldn't see the film only when you uh, used the vending machine but there was a huge website so actually it seemed like the whole project was about this national vending machine which you would take historical snacks out but in fact it was a big front for uh, a very large website where everybody was sharing their information I got this object and I don't think I agree with this story or my father used this when I was small or, you know, people had lots of stories. We got endless emails and correspondence about the materials and other pictures and, you know, also comparisons with other objects and thousand suggestions of what to put in more to get it more full. Now, in the beginning, when we started this project, we really thought it would be a pilot for a museum shop, a new style museum shop where you had, where you could test you know, all the objects that you wanted to put in, and then you would see what be would become popular. But after a while, we saw that people were using it for all kinds of ways. So our first venue in Amsterdam, well, this woman seems to be sniffing the window box. I don't know if she, maybe there's nutmeg in it or something. Um, but in Amsterdam, there were people coming and taking tea towels out because they claimed they were cheaper there than on the market, which I don't think was true. Um, but there were other people that were really fond of uh, certain things that had to do with their own history and other people were just very curious about some things that they thought they couldn't imagine it had any history at all. So then uh, there were things that were terribly popular. I'll show you one. This is the Dinky Toy Hippie Volkswagen bus used for the rock festivals in the early 70s. It was very popular. It's the most sold object. And there were others uh, of which I don't have pictures that were less popular because they were political or more far away. Now, we, um, we let this uh, vending machine travel. This is one of the venues where it was. And we said to the venues, we had basically two rules, because we really liked people to bring the machine to other places and ask their public what to put in. But we found it absolutely necessary that every hosting institution had a large campaign where they asked the public, their friends, their relatives, their neighborhood, via radio, TV, social media, what is the kind of historical object that you want to see in this vending machine? And people would then write down, they would have competitions. And we wanted to make sure, that's the second rule, that the vending machine would be put in a, a place where you didn't need to pay entrance fees to get in. Because we wanted to make sure 
that it was not a curatorial thing, that people, that the museum couldn't claim, well, our curator, curators have decided what objects are going to be in this exhibition, so people need to pay in order to see it. No, the public suggested what objects should be in, so they should use the, the, the presentation or use the exhibition for free as well. So we've had, uh, I think, five venues so far. Now the other thing we did, or maybe the last thing we did, is we send out what we called uh, love teams. And those were people from the National History Museum, and they would go to fairs and, uh, and uh, to all kinds of festivals and to all kinds of markets, and they would go speak to people. So they would have the objects and say, what do you think with this object? So um, people would then get these little cards, and the, the sentence, did doet me denken aan, on top, says, this makes me think of. So you see the cheese grater, and it says, the Dutch are really incredibly stingy and that's why they used cheese graters instead of knives. So you, you field a lot of these comments and we put these comments then into these large things. You see the objects above and everybody has something to say about these objects. And we wanted that dialogue both physically and we wanted digitally so that people get to speak about what the historical objects are and in the long run you get an idea of what it is. See, uh, this one is uh, you know, about coffee beans and somebody talking about going as, as, a, as a young, I don't know, as a boy or a girl, uh, to, makes me remind of my grandma who made the coffee, etc. But you get an idea what people think about historical objects. And if you make people talk and converse about historical objects, in the long run you get a good idea of what they think history is and how they can use objects to share ideas of what their small personal stories are and what their big stories are. Thank you very much.